can't believe today is April already. Today is April? What you mean? It's been April for three fucking days. You I know, but I've been out doing things. <laughs> I look like I'm bald, though. You gotta push that shit back a little bit. All right, so we're back for the second episode of Spilling the Tea with B. Um, so last time where we left off was we asked you guys what your experiences were, like from start to finish pregnancy-wise, conceiving, and then everything else. And she's just getting her caffeine in. I have mine in a solo. Now. I need it. Um, but so I guess I'll, since I got three, I'll start with my yeah, group up more. I do. <laughs> so with Jackson, Josh and I were married for about a year, and we didn't conceive from like the second we got married up until he got ready for his deployment. And when we found out about his deployment, we decided we were going to wait. Then, of course, two weeks later, after he left, I found out I was pregnant on April 19th. That will be six years that <laughs> I know. <laughs> I feel old, guys. Oh, my God. I six so years ago on the uh, 19th, I found out I was pregnant with my first kid. Um, that's a lot. Oh, my God. Yeah. And so his pregnancy was really easy. I was working up until I was, like, two or three months pregnant. <coughs> then I quit. I think it was, like, the end of May. Um, just because of the harsh chemicals and whatnot, and then he had told me obviously he was coming back, so I didn't really need to work anymore. Um, my mom knew the gender before I did. Um, she gave it away though, so I knew already. <laughs> um, but I did, you know, play my surprise on Josh, even though I already knew what the baby was. <laughs> And we did the whole picture thing, announcement. He came back in October and I had Jackson in December. So for six months of it, yep. six months, six, almost seven. seven. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't here, but my mom was here. That's basically it. I mean, he was an induction that took two and a half days. Cause we went in on the 29th and I had him on the 31st. So yeah, it was like- longer than mine. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was him. Jade. Oh, Jade. Let's see. I've known her since she's had Jade and Charlotte, so I have gotten yeah. the pleasure to know her prior to before she even conceived Jade when she was trying. Well, I so. forget. Jade, <laughs> it took me nine months to get pregnant with Jade. And yeah, throughout those while. nine months, like, I had met Brittany, and uh, we went through the whole, we were doing the gym thing and working out, blah, blah, blah. And she was there, like... <laughs> before conceiving Jade up until birth and all that afterwards. Yep. But it took from, I think it was like basically when I met you yeah, <laughs> up until much. I conceived her. Okay, but you have to, you have to understand something. When I, when I met Taylor, oh, when I God. met Taylor for the very first time, I know we talked about what happened the last time when we first met. Um, we had only known each other for about four months and then my husband went on his first deployment. Yeah. And so when we were doing all of that gym thing, one of the main reasons why that health kick and we were so much smaller then was because Brittany didn't have a vehicle. My husband had this damn Jeep that was the loudest, most weird car ever. I'm sorry, it was hard to start and it was a manual and Brittany doesn't drive a stick walked everywhere yeah. I mean everywhere we walked everywhere we walked to the we even walked over to the Airman's attic on the other side of base which yeah, was we did that a, couple a times. good like what mile and a half I would say at least two miles and Something we also like walked like twice to go bowling too oh god that was that was heck but uh, I think that because we were doing that, it wasn't until we started doing all of that once yeah. the weather got nicer that I think that that's what kind of made it easier for you to conceive her because we weren't really actively trying to like be healthy and lose weight. No. It was just kind of, I had no choice but to walk everywhere. So it just kind of happened that we were always outside. So I well, think Well, and then we just added going to the gym at night once. Yep, uh, once, once Alex got back, yeah. so. But then you could you got you got pregnant with her. I remember, she got pregnant with Jade in November. November during Thanksgiving, wasn't it? Like I found out yeah. the day after Thanksgiving. Yep, I remember that. <laughs> so it was like the beginning of November. I got pregnant. Yeah. Yep. Oh my gosh. I remember that one. But yeah, it took nine months to get pregnant with Jade. Got pregnant with her in November. Had her in August. Obviously, her pregnancy was, you know, easy. Um, hers was the easiest 
honestly. Yeah. I, I, I think mean, the that, only like, your thing cravings hard with were Jackson very, like, was the induction, and that didn't have anything to do with me. That was, oh, yeah. well, I guess technically it was me, and then him also. But that was also my first child, so. Yeah. But hers was the easiest. Yeah, I think, like, your mood swings were less than, like, yeah. your cravings weren't as bad. Like, I think Jade's, like, compared to Charlotte's was just overall more relaxing and more easy yeah. for you mentally, physically. Just the whole nine yards. Everything. So. I felt yeah. I felt more comfortable with that one. Um, her labor, I got induced with her. But it was a morning induction because I was already three centimeters, and it went pretty fast. It was like, what, seven hours? Uh, yes, I, I can tell you it was seven hours because when she went to get induced, I was in Michigan visiting uh, my husband's family with my son. So I actually did not get to be there for the birth of Jade. Um, I just, I, um, I even missed her gender reveal. She had like to send me a, a video message with like the video of her telling me that it was a girl. But um, I remember that morning when you had gotten up when you first started, I remember her texting me like right up until pushing. And I remember talking to my mother-in-law like about it. Like every time you were giving me an update, I was telling her and I was like, okay, she's not talking to me or it's time to push. And I remember my mother-in-law going, what? You just told me they gave her the medicine like six hours ago. Like, how is she already ready to push? I was like, yeah, she went really fast this time. But again, you were already three centimeters dilated, so yeah, you didn't I was need like as three much. centimeters, fifty percent of face. Yeah, you didn't. And they need started as much pitocin effort, like so. at, I think it was like seven or eight because we had to go there at six. Yep. And I had her at what three something. Yeah. So that was my <laughs> fastest. Yeah. And she was also my biggest baby. And then Charlotte. Oh, Charlotte. I love Charlotte. <laughs> Charlotte took the least amount of time to conceive. It only took me like four months. Four, I think. Four, right? Yeah, four, yeah, four months. Um, hers was the hardest pregnancy. There was a lot of um, issues that came with her that um, I, because obviously now her being out, I never really talked about. But um, her, she took the least amount of time she had the most complications pregnancy wise and like her mm -hmm. and her she was her labor was what 12 hours yeah 12 hours i liked this one because i got to be here for this one so obviously um um it has nothing to do with her but her husband is the type of person who definitely was just like i wanted to just be me and you, yeah. not the not not your BFFs. Like I love them. Don't get me wrong, but it should Ooh. just be us. They could come afterwards. <laughs> so as much as I would like to be in the room when she goes into labor for a baby, like I was oh, yeah. always hoping that. Obviously, like we we me and Canberra went the night before when she first got there for her induction, and yeah. Canberra was taking pictures, and we got to hang out with Josh and talk to her and get some. <laughs> get some uh, info <laughs> as she started her stuff and it was oh my it gosh. was it was quite funny we were there and being camper i think we were there to what like it was 11 and like, yeah it was 11 yeah. <laughs> and the crazy her. thing was is it was like so they they gave me what did they do isn't that the foley ball thing did you try that yeah i yeah. got they they gave me two options because i all all my pregnancies i got induced because my kids don't like to come on time they like to be forced out <laughs> so hers was also an induction i got induced at it was like 39 weeks or something or just 40 weeks i think it was just shy i think you're like what are you like 39 or like six days i think you're like something like that i think i was just just, just a day shy of 40 weeks um but they had given me the Foley bulb, I think like an hour before Brittany and Canberra came. And it was like 10, 1030, somewhere around there. And I had asked the nurse like, hey, I'm feeling these weird pains. Like they kind of feel like contractions. She was like, oh yeah, no, we don't see anything. I was like, they definitely feel like contractions. So I don't know what's going on. And I told her that like four different times when I was feeling them and they were just getting stronger. She goes, no, honey, like we're not picking up anything on the contraction monitor. Da, 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 da. I was like, it feels like my vagina is coming out. So <laughs> I'm having contractions and I feel them and I know what they are. Like, it's not I'm not crazy. Kid. It's not like, in my head. And she goes, okay, kid. hold on. Let me go get a different one. And sure enough, like I was having pretty steady contractions. I think they were like five minutes apart. And they were getting strong and I had contractions 
that whole night from I think I initially started at like 10 30 clear up until 7 30 the next morning when they took the fully bulb out and I found out that I was seven centimeters dilated and completely effaced and the the one thing with all of my pregnancies is once either my water breaks or I pass five it goes fast and I I'm all for people having natural births and I think it's a beautiful thing I don't think I can handle it um so I kept telling the doctor I said we need to hurry up and get this anesthesiologist in here so I can get this epidural because I don't want to have this baby without it they broke my water and then I felt like it was like three hours before the stupid guy came to give me the epidural it was only 45 minutes but I was I was sweating bullets I was so scared I was gonna have her before the epidural came and then he finally did all that and I think it was like what 20 minutes later <laughs> yeah and um, I can't believe they even let you do that like I know that a lot of doctors a lot of hospitals yeah. once you get to like a seven or eight you're so close at that point especially if you're uh, if it, you have to have your water broken obviously you had to so then that well, was yeah. why you could still have the epidural but if a woman's water has already broken on her own and she's already that quickly and she's moved that fast a lot of well, hospitals yeah. won't let you do it you're at the point of no return they're like that nah, you gotta keep going so. yeah it's nerve-wracking <laughs> but i think right after they broke my water they used the peanut ball and i used the peanut ball with jade and charlotte right when i hit like that nine because they were like yeah. oh we only have a little bit let's do the peanut ball and i was only on the peanut ball for like five minutes Yep. It was like one turn and then one turn and we were ready. Yep. Um, and Charlotte's is the funniest because I remember, like I know that they tell you, oh, it feels like you have to poop. No, it doesn't. In certain cases, like Jackson, it did feel like I had to poop. With Jade and Charlotte, no. It felt like something was hanging out of there. <laughs> it does. Brittany, I'll tell you that right now. Also, fun fact. She's had a C-section. I have vaginals. So that's the difference between us. So that's cool that we get to do this story. Exactly. Because um, it's yeah, two different, different, yeah. different sides. Exactly. But uh, I did the peanut ball one side. I was talking to Josh. Telling him that I was tired. Trying to get some sleep. Went over to the other side. And the nurse was like, yeah, okay. I think you might be ready. Uh, I was telling Josh. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm going to turn over on this side and try to get a little bit of rest. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, and the nurse comes in. She goes, okay, it's time to turn you on the other side. And I said, as I'm moving, and obviously, like, I can't feel my legs or anything. Um, I tell her, I'm like, it feels like something's kind of hanging out of there. And she goes, what do you mean? And I said, I don't know how else to describe it to you. It just feels like there's something coming out of there. And she goes, okay, hold on. So she pages, like, the doctor and everything. She goes, yeah, um, whatever room I was in says that it feels like there's something hanging out of there. And the... <laughs> The midwife, I was cracking up, and Josh goes, Can't you explain it any better? I'm like, no. no, there's no other way to explain it. And so the doctor comes back on the page and she goes, Yeah, I'm in this room. Um, we got a first time mom pushing. Um, can she hold it? So the nurse looks at me and she goes, We're gonna close your legs and you're gonna have to keep them closed um, until the doctor comes in. I'm like, Okay, this is great. Uh, I can't feel anything so if I start pushing her out I don't know what the heck I'm supposed to do but I kept my legs closed and even though I couldn't feel anything down there I felt like I was holding it all in and the the doctor comes in and she goes okay I'm sorry I was with the first time mom we did a couple practice pushes and nothing was coming and she goes okay you can open your legs she goes oh yeah there's her head she's gonna be out in one push I said oh lord Thank God you got here in the time that you did because oh, I feel like if I would have coughed, she would have just flew out or something. <laughs> like, honestly. Like, right <laughs> Basically. She goes, all right, now we're going to push. And we do it. I think it was like not even a full push. It was like a half a push. And she was already out. I don't like you. <laughs> Your stories. I so enjoy bad. that, you know, that I can do that. But I'm so scared. For what? For my last child life because of charlotte like i honestly i feel like this thing i'm gonna cut you and gonna you're gonna go. laugh and it's gonna fool, come flying <laughs> that's what's gonna happen okay so oh look no, one thing i've learned from you guys on camera our one friend camera has had three kids kayla's had three kids he had three kids cameras had four kids no cameras had four kids that's right why do i keep saying three i'm so sorry I keep saying three. She told Camera the other day that she, she only had, had three kids. kids. Yes. I'm just like, 
I can't get There's apparently. too many kids. There's <laughs> too many. We had our own soccer team between us four. Okay. No. So the fact that uh, Camera has had a vaginal and some C sections. <laughs> Obviously, Kayla's had a C section, and I've had all, I've only had one C section. Yeah. But from our knowledge of knowing other people and from what Camera has told us, the more kids you have, the quicker all of them supposedly come, especially yeah. if you do have vaginal births. So, I mean, the fear is probably a little true. Like, yes. Well, yeah. You probably, but it also depends on like what stage you are at birth if that happens like you've had to have inductions with all three like what yeah. happens if like your water breaks you're not gonna know what to do i have no you're idea you're gonna be like in the movie pretty my water broke <laughs> well that's the thing like with jackson i'm thinking oh my water's gonna break yeah. like, i'm so excited and the funny thing is is that like my mom and my grandma they had c-sections because their hips weren't wide enough or narrow or one of the two i think it's like narrow so kind of so, I don't know. and so when i was pregnant with jackson like we were preparing for that because obviously you think genetics and history and family and all that that uh, she's trying to play footsie with me right now sorry oh uh, care <laughs> oh, oh, oh my okay. lord you don't have to <laughs> i know i told you like real purple real purple real red we're looking like teenage mutant ninja turtles over here <laughs> oh he's blue tinky no, winky is he blue <laughs> Okay. okay, please let us know. Is Tinky Winky blue or purple? Because, bitch, I think it's purple. I think it's blue. <laughs> Did you, baby? Oh, I'm happy coming God. up. And Tinky Winky and Dipsy and Lala and Poe, my favorite. And that silly little vacuum that would vacuum that pink stuff. It would that thing out. was so fucking That cool. thing was so weird. Why are you cussing? Because. You do. <laughs> She's too much. Okay, so <laughs> on Thursdays. That's not gonna get edited out because I tried to figure it out last time and it just doesn't work. Yeah. That was how Charlotte made her appearance. Yeah, Charlotte. It was pretty fast. And I think the one thing that with Charlotte, because Canberra, uh, she talked me through it like she was going to be my doula if I wanted to do the all natural thing, and she told me about yeah. like the laboring down process, which I never knew about prior. And basically, once you hit 10 centimeters, like it's good for you to kind of like relax and do all that and i guess even though i needed to keep my legs closed that it was me laboring down a little bit so it wasn't as hard on me exactly. or baby so that was a positive that i never experienced beforehand yeah. but yeah that's yeah all the kids yeah oh jackson he was the smallest and he's the one that also made me get an episiotomy how does that work? I, d I don't understand I don't our understand. body logic on how the smallest baby you the have is the one who The only rare. thing that I can think of was, would be because he was my first, but then that still doesn't make any sense. He was 7, 12. Jade was 9, 4, and Charlotte was 8, 10. You yeah, had 7, 8, 9. I am. But just not in that order. No. Well, now fourth baby could be whatever freaking size. Uh, you want to take a guess right now while we're on here? Like we can go back and look? What do you think? Well, I I'm was gonna, guessing I'm that Charlotte was going to be around nine. I think she, yeah, no. I'm going to say four baby around somewhere around eight-ish pounds. I'm going to say probably like nine. Side. Your turn. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I don't know if we want to talk about this one. Okay. That's so, not fair because I just did all three of mine. Okay. So, I'm going to talk about Landon. In my 23 guy minutes. No, no. So, okay. <laughs> so, my little guy, um, Landon, Landon Michael, um, January, uh, January 2013, I actually turned 21 that year. Um, I was on birth control. I was on the pill. And uh, I apparently, uh, when I got sick one time, when I, I had ever going and getting antibiotics, yeah, Brittany did not listen to the pill instructions when it says that antibiotics can reverse the effects of the birth control pill and that you should probably refrain or use a condom like in between that time frame until you're done the antibiotics. And Brittany did not listen and apparently conceived the baby like before my birthday. So, my birthday is January 24th, so the the 24th of that year, I turned 21, and that following weekend, I went out and got lit like no other, okay? <laughs> okay, let me tell you, $350 later, went out and got really, really drunk that night, and uh, the following few days, a friend of mine got into a very, very bad car accident. Um, he actually, like, it was bad enough where they didn't think he was going to make it at first. And then, um, come to find out, like, he had shattered, like, every bone in his face from, like, here up. 
like the whole face had to be reconstructed for him a little bit like it was bad it was serious so while he, while he was in the hospital and his mom was there like look uh you know looking out for him and being in the in the icu for as long as she was days on end um i me and my uh other for other person who shall not be named who is my son's biological father um we're not living we were living out of our car at that time because Brittany has a past and it wasn't so good and we offered to come stay at the hospital with her and rotate with her so she could get go home and get some sleep and around like February 6th like a few weeks later he was still in the hospital and I remember sitting down talking to my friend Kelly and I was like huh like I think I'm like three days late on my period and they were like well look where you're at like you're at the hospital you're worried about Andrew everybody's stressed out and nobody gets their period on time like when you're super stressed out like this like that's yeah. probably what it is and I was like okay well the next morning Kelly had showed up at Andrew's mom's house where I was and she was like hey uh, I had a scare like a while back like I have an extra test do you want to take one like just in case and I was like all right sure like I really don't think I am I seriously think she's so stressed right. so I go up to the bathroom my friend Kelly oh my and the, thing, the the dude follows me in the bathroom, okay? In the bathroom and shuts the door. And I'm like, can you at least like let me sit here and do this in peace? And they're like, okay, we'll just turn around. They stood there in the bathroom while I peed on the damn stick. It was insane, okay? And I remember thinking like, there's no way this is gonna be positive. And I wasn't even finished wiping and it was it was there that's how there it was, was with there was no question the the, t the test line was stronger than a control line it was so positive and i like i remember dropping the stick and i remember just like immediately crying because my family and i were on good speaking terms like a lot of my friends weren't and i just remember thinking like how am i going to tell everybody you know that i'm pregnant when they said oh i told you so you know yeah. but found out I was pregnant and then flash forward to when I had landed um well hold on let's go back because when you found we were talking about like how we found out the gender so at the time I really wanted a girl I was dead said like I want a girl I've always wanted a girl I gotta have a little mini me like it's happening and they did a gender reveal for me they had a cake for me that I could cut into and a box of balloons for him well, the night before the reveal they had somebody let slip that it was a girl and I got my hopes up so like when I heard that I was like oh my gosh so uh when I went to go cut that cake the next day at that thing I was very surprised to see that bright blue color so apparently <laughs> they tricked me into it but I was still happy because he was healthy that's all I wanted so. yeah but flash forward to October I was due October 11th was my due date um and finally october 22nd is when they're that was literally two weeks overdue um oh, man. yeah um and that's when the doctor's like okay we're gonna schedule you for an induction you know so come on in the 22nd at it was like 8 a.m so we'll get you started so we went in and they first tried the cervidil gel on me so yeah they the gave me the gel first or yeah or the gel the pill or whatever they insert you in you so they gave me that first and I, I remember walking the hallway until like about noon and then they checked me i was complete i was zero i was zero face i was zero dilated when i got to the hospital he still didn't want to come out that's how i was over. jackson and so the doctor was like okay obviously like i don't want to have to keep doing like the foley bulb and do all this like i know i'm supposed to let you shoot he was like but this baby is just like not progressing at any and you've tried you've yeah. been walking for weeks like can we just go ahead and skip it and just go straight to the potato and i was like all right so after the seventh IV try and yes it took that many they finally got the IV and me in the worst possible place for a woman in labor they tried both tops of the hands they tried my wrist here they tried everywhere finally they get brought the anesthesiologist in and he stuck it here right here in that that's place where, my where you have to hold your legs when you push and it's like the worst spot ever and I was like so frustrated with that but I was like okay whatever it's all good there so uh, they started the Pitocin at noon that day and by like 10 o'clock that night I had only progressed to a four and a half and that was with Pitocin and I was dying okay I was dying I had I to this day have no idea what a contraction feels like in my belly every single tightening my belly would get tight but the pain was in my back and it was in my lower back and it was shooting up into my one shoulder specifically because I remember 
how bad my shoulder hurt like afterwards yeah but um so i was like at a four and a half and i was like i'm dying you got it they were trying to get me to a five before they gave me my epidural but i couldn't take it i was like sobbing and they were like okay so they brought the anesthesiologist in and they sent everybody out in the room except for you know who and so they had me like you know leaning over holding the pillow telling me to be still and because i kept having the contractions in my back it was like hard really hard to hold still when you're numbing my back and you're poking a needle which i don't like yeah. to begin with in my back and she missed the first time she yeah. went in a different spot so then she had to pull it out then she tried again and the tube moved she had to pull it out and try a third time it took oh, three hello. tries to get my upper door in. I, I think i kind of like drifted in and out of sleep the rest of the night and then by nine o'clock i was fully dilated uh they tried like lowering the epidural so i could feel it off so i could start pushing i was not good at pushing like it took me a good 20 pushes to like kind of figure it out i know that taylor said like with jackson it felt like she had to poop but with the girls it didn't for me oh no i was laying on that bed i gotta poop guys i'm gonna poop everywhere like i was so that's what i thought because that's what it felt like to me i was just like no i'm gonna poop i'm gonna poop i know yeah. i'm gonna poop I'm talking about the fact that I felt like I had to poop when I'm pushing him out and now he has to go poop. So look at that. Yeah. We're, we're two oh, pieces of pot over here, mind. so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, no. But it's yeah, so funny it, story it's, with the whole pooping thing. Like, okay, so Jackson serious. was my first and I was like, she was so scared that I was going to poop on the thing. <laughs> well, afterward, you know how they have to push on your stomach and all that stuff. I guess I had built up gas with Jackson. So when they went to like push on my stomach, I let numerous rip and i was like oh my god i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i'm so embarrassed and my husband sitting over there cracking up my mom was there my mom was like oh my gosh <laughs> so embarrassing and i uh, kept telling the nurse i was like i'm so sorry she goes honey we've seen worse she's like at least yeah. you didn't poop it was just gas <laughs> it's fine but i remember telling everybody that and uh my the 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 Landon's biological father at the time's brother was in the room when it was time to start pushing and he was like supposed to leave the room but because yeah. everybody was coming in i had my sister holding one leg i had a good friend of mine holding the other somebody else was feeding me ice chips while i'm trying to push <laughs> like because i had like i was getting high like the poor guy like like i do kind of feel bad for him for this part of it like he because everybody kind of bombarded him Russia once I started like there was yeah. no way to walk around like the back of my bed and he didn't want to walk around because he knew like if he walked around like he couldn't help but look and he was worried like if he looked it would like scar like any kind of thought in the future with us so he was just like sitting in the corner like this like trying to hide his <laughs> eyes because like he didn't want to like make oh me feel God. uncomfortable so that part I did appreciate of the dude that I didn't really like but whatever yeah um and then once I finally got the hang of the pushing I pushed and until noon I pushed for three hours and I remember um I got him to crown I did get him to crown yeah. because they were like oh look he's got blonde hair and I was like oh I promise he's yours I promise he's yours because I like he had dark hair and at the time I was coloring my hair very dark yeah so like it didn't hit me that like hello Brittany like you were born with blonde hair like no wonder he's blonde you were born you're a natural blonde too technically so uh I did get him to crown and then out of nowhere uh i like i pulled my leg down and i said i can't i can't keep pushing anymore i yeah. i barely slept i said i can't do this and i remember the doctor telling me he was like I, i'll give you the option if you want to call it quits now and go for a c-section you can but i'm gonna tell you you're gonna prefer the recovery time with the vaginal and i yeah. was like no i'm gonna keep trying and just as i said i was gonna keep trying and they lifted my leg back up his heart rate just like plummeted and my blood pressure skyrocketed and we were they were like oh what the hell and like where he was crowding at like it, he was almost pulling like it, he was getting sucked back in like you could yeah. see him coming back in and that's when the doctor was like okay you don't have a choice now you have to go like we have to get him out now i don't i'm not sure like what's going on so they took me back into the or and the nurse was, oh, swings my bed over next to the operating table with the epidural still in me and my body is numb from here down now come on people i'm 200 some plus pounds of fluff baby liquid everything in me and half my body is numb and this woman had the nerve to look at me and goes can you move to the other side of the operating table for it for me can you scoot over 
Oh, I wanted to throttle her. I was like, what do you mean move over, lady? I can barely move my top, let alone like my bottom half. Like, what you mean move? Like, what are you talking about? Okay, we have to stop because my son is still going to the bathroom. I didn't even do my bedroom. Okay, so, so um, I was like super pissed off at that nurse for like trying to tell me like That's crazy. move over. I was so mad. And then, so they finally got me over to the operating table and um, his biological father hadn't gotten out of the room yet and they had already pulled the thing up and they were like, all right, we're gonna give you some numbing stuff. It's gonna numb you from like here down. And they had strapped my arms down. I remember I could move my fingers a little bit, but I couldn't really move anything else but my head. And I remember like, I know with the epidural, like you're numb, but be I don't know if it's because you can still see your body. Like I still could feel like a little, obviously you can still feel the pressure down yeah. there. With the medicine, obviously for like a C-section, it's like, numb numb it's literally it makes you feel like your body's not attached like it's just your head it's a very weird and like psychedelic kind of feel like it's it's weird well with and the epidural <laughs> it was it's waist down and yeah. like with jackson and jade i couldn't feel anything so it almost felt like i didn't yeah. have a butt or anything else yeah it's like your butt and your legs are yeah. attached but you can kind of feel the rest of it with but that. with charlotte's like yeah. i could feel my legs and i kept telling josh like i was like i don't have a butt anymore like i can't feel it it's gone it disappeared <laughs> but my legs are still there like I know that they're there I can feel them yeah. but I can't move them yeah yeah and I have the... no butt how do I have legs yep. like I was freaking out yep. because yep. my others it was like okay I don't have I don't have legs or a butt anymore so whatever yeah so with the c-section it's weird it's, it's, it, with the epidural it's a weird sensation with the c-section medicine it's a very weird sensation so I had so they started it before he even got in the room and uh I mean, I remember my hands, and I remember being very cold. I do remember, like, it was even way colder than, like, the epidural feeling. And uh, they got him out, and they showed him to me. And then I remember them walking him over to go weigh him real quick as they were wiping him off. And as he was crying, I heard the lady go, no, we got to go put him in the thing now. And so the, the other nurse come over, and she's like, all right, her, like, we have to take him to the NICU. And I said, why? They're like, oh, well, your placenta tested positive for strep B. And strep B is something that a mom can contract while she's pregnant that if you, that when we're all delivering a baby, you can pass on to the baby that can be very helpful to the baby. It can actually yeah. even kill the baby. Um, I actually had had the test. Most women get the test done weeks prior to your, very close to your due date. My test then was negative. So I had contracted it that quickly from a negative test to my delivery That's time. That's crazy. Yeah. So he, they weren't sure if he had it and his test would take three days to come back. So they wanted to take him to the NICU to get started on my antibiotics just in case. And he was also jaundice a little bit. So they wanted to go ahead and just kind of get it all started. That way, if he did have it, they were taking the precaution. And then if he didn't, worst case scenario was that they were just going to deal with the jaundice for seven days and let him get comfortable and make yeah. sure that the strep B wasn't going to help. Um, but so they, they, they took him right away. And I remember telling his person, like, don't leave his sight. Like, you yeah. know, leave me. It's fine. And so they sewed me up and they wheeled me into recovery. And this nurse comes in and um, the gown that I had on was, like, not on my, like, my stomach. Like, it had gotten pulled over. So it was pretty much from, like, under my boobs down. Like, there was no gown covering me under the covers, which I didn't know. And she, like, peeled the covers back. And she's like, all right, we got to clean you up. And I'm going to give you um some pain medicine in your in your IV and I was like okay and she like rips the got me cleaned up they got me a new gown they got me new sheets and right as she was sticking the medicine what is the pain medicine they give you in the IV um <coughs> uh, I don't know what is that really heavy pain medicine not what is it not Percocets it's something uh morph morphine I think I think it's morphine. Yeah, so they gave me a shot of morphine through my IV, and normally I I don't have a very high t pain, pain tolerance. Like, you give me time. So worried about him being in the NICU. They gave me the shot, and I remember like sitting up, and she's like, "Where are you going?" I said, "I'm going to the NICU to go see my son." She was like, "No, you can't move. You're still numb from the neck, from the waist down. It's still coming out of you." I was like, "Well, then you better get me." A, and I remember like cussing, like I felt bad afterwards, but I was like, "You better give me an active wheelchair, or I'm gonna army crawl." my way to the NICU because I know where it is and they actually she was like okay hold on and she went and got the doctor and the doctor actually took me in the bed and all 
yeah. still in the, from recovery straight into the NICU and allowed me to do uh, chest to chest with him so that he could nurture for the first time. So that's what happened with me with him. He was uh, seven pounds, seven ounces, 20. And then the aftermath of the C-section was not good. So as Taylor said, after you have a baby, in case you don't know, for women who are gonna have their first baby or for men who don't know in general, who's never been around that when a woman is pregnant obviously she does most of the time they do not have a period for nine months yeah and after you have a baby there is excess blood that had been stored in the placenta after the placenta was delivered and everything like that you have excess fluid and you get blood clots yeah. um and when you're done having a baby whether it be c-section or vaginal what they do is they actually just like she said press on your tummy and it's supposed to uh push the clots yeah. and the blood out the excess blood out to clean you out so you don't get an infection or anything like that yeah it was crazy it was a very very different experience from taylor but i wouldn't change anything because he's here yeah and so now you know if the future if me and alex want to have a second baby um the fact that i was able to get landon to crown and the fact yeah. that it was his blood pressure or his heart rate and my blood pressure was a reason for the c-section doctors are very confident that i could probably try for a VBAC. so that is my hope for baby number two if we have one is that i would really like to try for one um uh, i don't know if i could do it unmedicated like you know i really don't i, I know that would be better, especially for a VBAC. yeah but i'm I'm just not quite certain that I wouldn't end up in back labor again, so that's making me a little nervous. But I have a feeling that when Kimbra talks to me about that, if I become pregnant, that she might just be the person that I need. Yes, but yes, so that is my birthing experience with Landon, and that is going to be hopefully my birthing experience with baby number two. Don't know. I mean, yeah. I guess we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. But for now, that's that's what it's gonna be. So, I have a question for you. <laughs> What's well, question for everybody, but it's for her in general, so that yeah. we could get, I wanna get your opinion first. Okay, so I know how she feels because I did it for her, but we wanna know what everybody else feels like and have a discussion with this on whether or not it's appropriate to have multiple baby showers after you've had your first baby. Yes or no? What do you think? Okay, so <laughs> before I got pregnant with Jade, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna have a boy, so it doesn't really matter. I don't need to have another baby shower, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> then I found out she was a girl. <laughs> well, I didn't have any girl stuff, and obviously, like, I could have just, we could have gone and got her her own stuff, but I know that Brittany likes to throw little surprises and do all that stuff so I figured okay sure like I have no problem with that we can go ahead and do a baby shower not a big deal <laughs> then I got pregnant with Charlotte and I was like okay I already have a shit ton of girl stuff you don't really need another one please don't throw me a baby shower so my take on it is if your first baby is different from your second baby then I would say it's up to you like if you want to have another baby shower or if you have people that would throw it for you then i say go for it if you are having the same let's try again okay so if your second baby is the same gender as your first i would say no just because i feel like you should save this stuff especially if you're not like if you if you said yes okay i only want to have one child and i don't want to have any more then yes i would say get rid of your baby stuff if you if you know that you want to have multiple children, I would suggest like saving, especially the big stuff. Maybe not clothes necessarily, because that's easy enough to buy. But like a crib or a pack and play or something, like those type of things I would save if you want to have more kids. See, I, see okay, so obviously I, I threw the thing for Jade. I, yeah. I didn't call it a baby shower when we did it. No, we, we called, called it, it a baby, baby sprinkle because that's like what it's called now when you have like the more words and all of that. So, uh, yes, I did throw her that. Now, when she had Charlotte, I didn't give her a party party, but no. I did, we did take her out to dinner where we still like got her gifts and I still got her tons of stuff afterwards for Charlotte and all of that. And when we had, when Canberra had her fourth Hudson, um, the baby she had prior to that, Claire, was obviously a girl, so it was a different sex. Yeah. So she still had the big things like the car seats and the crib and all of that, 
but she had no boy clothes. Like her boy is Leo, then he's gonna be seven this year. That's a big gap yeah. between seven and then Hudson. Yeah. So she obviously Plus they needed, were in different um, like seasons. seasons too. So she obviously needed clothes and things like that. So we did yeah. throw her a baby shower for her. And I we threw a baby shower for our friend Amanda and I'm also getting ready on Saturday to throw another baby shower for another friend of mine. Um I just like I like doing it regardless of how many kids you do it because not every baby shower is like the, the same. same yeah and everybody's experience with their different kids is the same for example my baby shower i was supposed to have two one that turned out good and one that did not turn out good and i still ended up getting everything that i needed for landon but when we have baby number two my husband it will not be around us to even try until like landon starts school time this year around that time if not later so um if that's the case, Landon will be turning six in October. So that means if I were, say we were to try for a baby like right away, if that's what we wanted to do, I wouldn't even be having a baby until he turned number seven. So there's almost like a seven year gap again between him and then whatever future baby we would have. So if it's a boy, I have nothing. I, I did, the only thing I did save of his was his crib. You want to say hi to everybody? Hi. Say hi to I mean, there would be almost a seven year difference. And that's if we even have one right away. If we don't and we wait a little bit, there's going to be an even bigger gap. So for me, I mean, technically, it would be within the realm of like, it would be acceptable regardless if I had a boy or a girl to have a baby shower. I don't want one. I just don't, I don't want one when we have a baby. I don't want one. Don't throw me one. This woman over here knows not to. Hammer knows, Kayla knows, everybody knows. Do I think they're gonna listen? No. But the I only reason, okay, but she I makes that sound so bad. Like we're these horrible friends that don't want to listen to her. The thing <laughs> is, is that we tell her the same thing. Like we all tell each other the same stuff. Like don't and do none this, of us don't do listen, that. Nobody so. listen. But but again, I personally think I'm the same way with you. Like if you have a gap with it, if you have different sexes. Like go for it. Well, I think, yeah, like you said, if you have multiple like kids sets. back to back to back, and you know that's what you want, okay, then maybe just start saving, and then just do like we do with her, a baby sprinkle, where you just get yeah. the clothes for the sex that you need. And or you have there's else. those diaper parties. Or the now diaper parties where you just get diapers, diapers and, wipes. and wipes. They're like the baby butt wipe, the the butt cream, and yeah. <laughs> the ointments and stuff like that. Like do those. Those are perfectly acceptable there's all too. Kinds of things. Yes. Now, here's another look. I gotta ask you this. What was the worst thing you got asked? Or what is the worst question mm -hmm. that somebody asked you or has asked somebody you've known mm -hmm. to a pregnant woman while they're pregnant that offended you? Yes. Well, gotta okay. go. Cause I so, have a couple. <laughs> there's been a couple things. Honestly, like I've had something wow. happen with all three of my pregnancies where someone has done or said something that they honestly they didn't even have a brain to think no common sense there with jackson was at my doctor's office because with him i gained the most weight um i think it was right after josh got back the first appointment when josh got back we went we had chick-fil-a before we went to the doctor's office and we went into the doctor's office and they did the whole weight thing and blah blah blah, blah. and doctor comes and he goes yeah well i suggest you don't gain any more weight this pregnancy <laughs> And I was like, uh, okay. I'm sorry, but I don't think that because ta back before Taylor had Jackson, I don't personally think she's big. She will tell you something different because that's her and this is me and I love her and I'm obviously fluffier than her to begin with. So hello. But obviously Taylor before she had Jackson was smaller than she is now. And so I personally think, but unless you were cur currently overweight, when you start a pregnancy i don't think a doctor should be telling me that like obviously when i had landed and when i can see landed i was still a good amount of weight so it was very critical for me to not gain a lot of weight I, granted i actually only ended up gaining 20 pounds which was astounding considering that i know that a lot of people of my size get the gestational diabetes and they have a hard time controlling the fact that they gain a lot of weight but um I personally don't think that a doctor anywhere with somebody your size like that should have ever said no. anything like that to you because she wasn't overweight at all this before was she had Jackson. six weeks. Yeah, see, she wasn't even overweight, so, so I personally I wasn't even think, that big. No. 
No. Um, that that one, that one. Oh, and what about the? Oh, hey, what about this one? <laughs> what about when it's? Oh, how many weeks are you? And you're like either not that pregnant or you already had your baby and you still got the belly a little bit. Yeah. And they think that you're pregnant, and I'm like. Oh, that one irritates me, but the best one with me was it goes with the weight thing because I am overweight and because yeah. I already have a belly. I did not show with Landon that I was pregnant until I was like pretty much like eight months. Like it was like the last like four to six weeks. Could you actually tell I was like pregnant, pregnant and just not like yeah. overweight? And um, I literally back when uh, like I was seven months pregnant, um, saw somebody from my high school that I knew, somebody who. I'm not friends with I like I was friendly with like I said hi like in the hallway but didn't really like the crowd that they were with and he um, we were standing in a grocery store line and he got to talking to somebody with me and they were we got my pregnancy got brought up he was like oh you're pregnant I couldn't even tell he was like how far along are you and I was like seven months and he was like oh wow it's a good thing you're overweight because nobody will ever be able to tell you had a baby Yep. Insta tears. I cried for like three hours that day. I was That's so ridiculous. That, I don't that think one, with those, Charlotte, I think I was fine. Like it was more yeah, the after. Really, yeah, funny though. There's there's just there's a limit. There's a limit to what people should there's say to, to pregnant ladies. And if, for for other women it's you should you, if you if you see a pregnant woman and you know for sure she's pregnant, like there's no question of it. Don't ask her anything that you don't want to no. be asked. Now, if you have no filter and you have no shame in your game, don't say anything at all. Then don't say anything at all. If you don't have nothing nice, nice to say, then don't say nothing at all. Like that's just how it should be. Yeah. And if you're a man and you're not sure, you definitely should keep your mouth shut. Okay? Because women, we especially the pregnant ladies with them hormones, we are evil and we will cut you. So just just don't do it. I'm very interested to see how like if me and Alex have a baby, how Alex is gonna be with oh that because God. I try to explain him like they they know me and they know me at my limit when I'm angry or when I'm upset or when I'm happy, and so does Alex. But yeah. no, none of them unfortunately ever got to know me when I was pregnant. No. So they just got to hear stories. So it's gonna be very interesting but to that, see how okay. everybody handles me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, honestly, like the I guess the gist of it is, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Yeah. And stay away from comments like, "Oh, I can't believe you're only that far along," or "Oh, you, oh, Just, you're so big for that size," or "Oh, you, you're not that big at all." Like, honestly, the the type of things that women want to hear when they're pregnant is, "Oh, you, you're glowing. You look you know, beautiful. beautiful. Oh, you're you're carrying that baby really high. Probably it's a boy or low. It's a girl or vice or whatever it's supposed to be. Uh, like stuff like that. Like, oh, you're carrying that so well. You don't even look pregnant from the back. Like, oh, like it's making your your boobies look really nice. Okay, it's no, like, no, Brittany, no. I'm for talking your about husband. for your husband. Your hu okay, I'm not talking about <laughs> random people. You didn't warn anybody. I'm sorry. I meant okay, for your random husband. people. Okay. That random people women just don't, don't break their boobs and beautiful butts. comments. Obviously, regular beautiful your comments. Just stay away from the negatives and talk about yeah. the positive. That's that's pretty much all you really need to do with that. So. So for next week, uh, I was thinking about asking some because we talk about i was thinking about some more of like the harder stuff about pregnancy we've kind of started with the like, fourth trimester as they call it yes yeah like so we, we kind of covered like everything from how we met and how we first had our kids and up to the fact that we've had them but i would love to talk about the not so negatives and i have a feeling it's going to get a little hot and heavy i think it's going to get a little teary-eyed so we're probably going to need tissues <laughs> that's one that i really would like to hear you know if you guys have concerns about us or if there's questions you have about ours about yeah. the the two topics that come to mind to talk about that is like your best moments after you first had the baby and then your worst moments your worst and then i think a big one also is like baby blues and postpartum postpartum depression is another big one i think that needs to be talked about and i think it needs to be talked about not just from the aspect of, not just from the aspect of the fact that it's not, uh, not necessarily Whoa. always supposed to be a negative thing, you know, yeah. if that makes sense, you know, like I think. I do. If you feel like you need help, then you need to, you know, speak out. And a lot of people don't 
want to because they feel like it's going to hurt their ego or yeah. they're not going to help get the help they need. I think it's just something that needs to be brought up and talked about. Yeah, and postpartum, both yeah, postpartum depression with moms is very serious because there are moms who have got to that level who yeah. felt that they were better off, you know, and it's a very serious topic. It's a very heavy yeah. topic, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't talk about it no. you know i think that next week's episode should really we can kind of get down and kind of expose ourselves a little bit more it's going to be a little rough i think it's going to be a little bit longer episode i know with this one yeah it's going to get cut down a little bit to just the bare minimum to what you guys want it to know but next week's may be a long episode so disclaimer if you don't want to watch next week it's like you don't have to no we're not gonna you know push the issue but it probably will be definitely gonna, gonna be really raw it's gonna be very raw very exposed and there's going to be some probably some truths that we have maybe not spoken but to each other yeah that will officially be made to the public so the one thing that i ask is that when everybody watches next week episode is to keep an open mind yeah and if you have any comments or if you have any concerns or any questions you know feel free to feel leave free to comment. down in the comments you know dm us do whatever you need to do follow us on facebook uh fo please follow instagram. her blog, instagram everything just you know ask the questions if you yeah. think it's too inconspicuous or if it's too raw and you don't want to say it you know on a public forum dm us where it's private yeah. so we there's really not one topic that you're gonna ask us that we're not gonna say like that we won't talk about so no we're pretty much open so for everything. everything so whatever you think that that's how that's gonna go or if there's any kind of concerns for yourself for us for people you know yeah. just whatever kind of questions you have send them in and we'll hopefully we'll get them in and we'll do that next week so don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you next Thursday for a nice raw episode three of Spilling the Tea with B.